After studying this module, you shall be able to know the Securitization Act, learn the provisions and preconditions of Securitization Act, identify the methods of the recovery of NPAs, evaluate the impact of Securitization Act on the banking sector, and analyze the challenges to the Securitization Act. The Securitization Act. For years, Indian banking and institutional lenders have had a major complaint and were criticized for their inability to control their increasing burden on non-performing assets, but when it came to recovery and reducing the bad debts, they had little power. The civil courts were found ineffective, hence came the recovery of debts due to banks and Financial Institution Act of 1993. However, it failed to execute court orders or decrees in an effective way. The government in June 2002 introduced a new law entitled the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act of 2002 that claims to simplify the process of recovery of bad loans from willful defaulters. The Act is the first legal framework that recognizes securitization, asset recovery and reconstruction. The Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act of 2002, also known as the SARFIC, that is S-A-R-F-A-E-S-I Act, regulates securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and also enforces the security interest and matters related to it. The next is the concept of securitization. Definition. Securitization of financial assets is a financial tool for the lenders which helps them to securitize their future cash flows from secured assets and thus helps them to get their block funds released. Securitization is also called as the process of conversion of existing assets into marketable securities. In other words, it is the process of converting non-marketable securities into marketable ones. Some of the assets that can be securitized are loans like car loan, housing loan and future cash flows like movie ticket sales, card payments, car installments or any other form of cash flows which will occur in future. Suppose Mr. A wants to start a restaurant business and is in need of funds for the business. In order to raise funds, he can sell his future receivables like cash flows from the sale of food items in the form of securities. This will injure the investors as they will have a claim over the future receivables generated from the sale of food item. Also, Mr. A will be benefited as he will be able to meet his loan obligations from the cash flows generated from the restaurant itself. Salient provisions of the law. The transactions relating to securitization and asset reconstruction in India fall under the formal statutory framework due to this act. The act promotes setting up of securitization companies and asset reconstruction companies to take over the NPAs accumulated with public financial institutions and banks. Special powers are provided to the lenders and the securitization or asset reconstruction companies which enable them to take over the assets of borrowers without first resorting to court. The banks and financial institutions can now realize their loans speedily as they have powers to enforce their security without filing suits or cases before the courts and hence recover their dues without incurring much time and cost. Preconditions The Act stipulates four conditions for enforcing the rights by a creditor. The debt is secured. The debt has been classified as an NPA by the banks. The outstanding dues are 1 lakh and above and more than 20% of the principal loan amount and interest thereon. The security on which the act to be enforced on is not an agricultural land. 
rights of borrowers. The above observations make it clear that the SAFAESI Act provides the effective measures to the secured creditor which helps them to recover their long outstanding dues from the non-performing assets but also the rights of the borrowers could not be ignored and hence they have been duly incorporated in the law. The borrowers can also remit the dues and avoid losing the security at any time before the sale is concluded in case the authorized officer do any unhealthy or illegal act he will be liable for penal consequences also compensation will be given to the borrowers for such acts the borrowers in appeal can approach firstly the DRT and thereafter the DRAT for redressing the grievances the limitation period is 45 days and 30 days respectively. Methods of recovery. According to this act, RBI does the registration and regulation of securitization companies or reconstruction companies. These companies are accredited to raise funds by issuing security receipts to qualified institutional buyers, vesting banks and financial institutions to take possession of securities given for financial assistance. Also, in the event of default, they can sell or lease the same to take over the management. Provisions are made under this Act for two main methods of recovery of the NPAs as follows. Securitization. Securitization is the process of issuing marketable securities financed by a pool of existing assets such as car or home loans. This asset is sold as soon as it is converted into a marketable security. By forming schemes for acquiring financial assets, a securitization company or reconstruction company may raise funds from only the QIB, where QIB stands for Qualified Institutional Buyers. Asset Reconstruction The asset reconstruction companies came in India due to SAR FAEISI Act. It can be done by either proper management of the business of the borrower or by taking over it or by selling a part or whole of the business or by deferment of payment of debts payable by the borrower enforcement of security interest in accordance with the provision of this act. Further, the registration of security receipt is exempted from this act. This means that when the securitization company or reconstruction company issues receipts, the receipt holder is authorized to undivided interest in the financial assets and there is no need of registration unless and otherwise it is compulsory under the Registration Act of 1908. However, the registration of the security receipt is required in the following cases. There is a transfer of receipt and the security receipt is creating, declaring, assigning, limiting and extinguishing any right, title or interest in an immovable property. Now, legal powers of the law. The first is powers of debt recovery tribunal. The debt recovery tribunals have been empowered to entertain appeals against the misuse of powers given to banks. Any order made by the debt recovery tribunal, if not aggrieved by any person, he may go to the appellate tribunal within 30 days from the date of receipt of the order of debt recovery tribunal. The next is role of chief metropolitan magistrate or district magistrate. The chief metropolitan magistrate or district magistrate has been mandated to assist secured creditor in taking the possession of secured assets. The chief metropolitan magistrate or district magistrate makes sure that once the creditor has given him in writing that all the formalities of the act have been completed, they may take the possession of such assets 
and documents relating thereto and also have to forward such assets and documents to the secured creditor. Now here you have to note that such an act of the CMM or DM cannot be called in question in any court or before any authority. Role of High Court for the implementation of the act in the matters related to Jammu and Kashmir, it allows the creditor to reach out to the high courts. However, high courts have been entertaining right petitions under the article 226 that is power to issue rights of the constitution of India. The next topic to discuss is impact of securitization on banking. The announcement of SAR FAESI Act has been a standard reform in the Indian banking sector. The decrease in the non-performing assets shows the progressive increase in the growth of this act. At present, there are three legal options which are available for the purpose of NPAs which is Sarfaisi Act, Debt Recovery Tribunals and Lok Adalats. Among the three options available, Surfacy Act is of utmost significance and also effective in recovery of NPAs. According to the RPI's report on trend and progress of banking in India 2012 and 13, through the Surfacy Act, banks have recovered Rs 18,500 crores. About 80% of the total amount of NPAs recovered is accounted through this act. The following tables shows an insight about the recovery through various channels in crores. Securitization can transform banking in other ways as well along with freeing up the blocked assets of banks. The growth in the credit offtake of banks has been the second highest in the last 55 years. But at the same time, the incremental credit deposit ratio for the past one year has been greater than one. What this means in simple term is that for every rupees 100 worth of deposit coming into the system, more than rupees 100 is being disbursed as credit. The growth in deposits has not been matched with the growth of the credit offtake. So, the question that arises is that how the banks are funding this increased credit offtake as the deposit inflow is less than the credit outflow. Essentially, banks have been selling their investment in government securities. The banks are able to cater the credit boom by selling their investments and giving out that money as loans. However, banks will not be able to continue this form of funding of credit forever, principally because banks have to sustain an investment of 25% of the net bank deposits in statutory liquidity ratio instruments. The investment of banks in government paper has been declining that is clearly visible from the fact that they have been selling the government papers to fund the credit offtake. Once the banks reach this level of 25%, any more government securities cannot be sold to generate liquidity. Given the speed of this credit offtake, some banks reach this level of 25% very fast. So, banks in order to keep giving credit need to ensure that more deposits keep coming in. One way is obviously to increase the interest rates. Another way is securitization. Banks are also able to securitize the loans they offer and they use the money brought in by this to give out more credit. The next topic to discuss is challenges to the securitization act. Out of these challenges, the first one is the sale of security. Generally, it has been found that the banks find it difficult to take steps in order to sell the property after getting the control over it. Since there are no specific provisions to attain the property for its own, the bank can hold ownership without recourse to wipe off the liability from its books. The creditor with the consent of the court can also take part in the auction and acquire the secured property. The Securitization Act does not provide any specific provisions and rules regarding the same. The next challenge is interference of court. 
courts often interfere in the surface act proceedings by accepting the writs filed by the distressed parties although the decision of the supreme court are effective only after the remedies in the respective statute are exhausted petitions are filed in many matters this often causes a lot of delay when it comes to the recovery of the loan the next challenge are concerned with legal issues another issue that is there in the securitization market is the legislation which lags behind although surface act has facilitated banks in order to do away with bad loans still there are certain legal changes which are required in order to enable banks to securitize and sell good loans currently the laws related to transfer of property are old and outdated which require updating the occurrence of stamp duty on property which varies across states hampers the development of securitization also the existing tax laws do not have any provision that has been made specifically with only to securitization hence new legislation would be required in order to decide these issues the next topic is amendments proposed amendments to the act the government had approved bill to amend the act the enforcement of security interest and recovery of debts law bill 2011 amends two acts surface act of 2002 and recovery of debts due to banks and financial institution act of 1993 which is also known as drt act via these amendments the first amendment is a formal process has been prescribed for taking into record the substitution of banks by asset reconstruction companies and securitization companies in any proceedings pending before any tribunal or court or other authority in respect of the financial assets which the asset reconstruction companies and securitization companies have acquired from such bank the second one is asset reconstruction companies and securitization companies have been legitimate to convert any portion of the debt due to them by the borrower into equity shares of the borrower company next the banks have been legalized to purchase the immovable property which has been furnished to them as security and which is being sold under an auction process provided the purchase price offered by other auctioneers in respect thereto is below the reserve price set by the bank the bank can hold such property for a maximum period of 12 years after which the bank is mandatorily required to dispose of such property in compliance with the br act miscellaneous amendments bill proposes banks and financial institutions to enter into the settlement or negotiations with the borrower the debt recovery tribunal is given the powers to pass an order acknowledging any such settlement or compromise earlier a borrower could approach debt recovery tribunal to get stay order against bank or asset reconstruction company the new amendment recommends that drt cannot grant any stay order unless both parties that is borrowers versus lender bank are heard this amendment ensures that the process of law is not misused by unscrupulous borrowers to get stay orders just to delay money recovery summary let us now summarize what we have learned in this module securitization is likely to become more popular in the near future in the banking sector securitization has been perceived majorly as facilitator of asset recovery and reconstruction there are numerous measures that the government undertook in order to confront the sickness among financial institutions and banks with time the situation in banks with respect to the menace of npas has improved banks are expected to sell off a greater amount of npas to arcel by 2007 when they have to shift to basel 2 norms 
blocking too much capital in NPAs reduces the capital adequacy of banks and acts as a deterrent for banks to meet the Basel II norms. Thus, banks will have two options, either to free capital tied up in NPAs and other loans or to raise more funds through securitization.